So this is the new Apple Watch Series 9, which is basically their latest and greatest in their series line of smartwatches. And this year they brought improvements when it comes to the display, as well as the processor and internals that not only makes it faster, but also allows it to get some new software features. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what's the same with the Series 9 versus previous generation Apple Watches. And we're also gonna talk about what's new, of course. But being that this is a fitness and sports focused channel, I do also wanna focus a lot on the sports and fitness aspects of the Series 9. So while Apple Watches tend to be known as smart watches first, they also do offer a lot on the sports and fitness side of things. So I'll be doing a deep dive into these sort of features with the Series 9 with what it can and can't do. And I'll also have plenty of examples for you in regards to accuracy when it comes to tracking sports, like heart rate accuracy, as well as GPS accuracy. But related to that, I also wanted to talk about how the Series 9 compares to the Ultra 2. So the Ultra has gotten a lot of attention since it first came out last year. And it's exciting and all with how it's marketed as an outdoor focused Apple Watch for sports but just because it costs more doesn't necessarily make it the best choice for everyone, even for sports. There's reasons that you may want to go for the Ultra 2, of course, but there's also reasons why the Series 9 actually may suit you better. All right, so with the Series 9, it shares the same design as previous generation Apple Watches like the Series 8, 7, as well as the 6. The 5 and the 4 differ a little bit more with it, at the core, the Series 9 shares the same design as before. And for the color options, they tend to offer similar colors from year to year with subtle changes to each color, but they're now offering this pink color, which I have right here. It's not Barbie pink, which would have been kind of cool to go along with the movie, but hey, this new pink color may appeal to a lot of you out there. Now, in years past, there used to be Nike edition Apple Watches, but they've kind of gone away from that approach where now everyone can download the special Nike watch faces. And then the same thing goes for the bands as well, where you can choose a Series 9 with a Nike band when you order it. So while there's no specific Nike edition per se, you can very well get the same thing. Oh, and then for their new bands, so their silicone and fabric nylon bands are now made with recycled materials. So like these new Nike sport bands that I have right here contain about a third recycled materials with these speckled flakes that were actually from previous Nike watch bands. And I have to say that I'm usually a pretty plain Jane type of person when it comes to watch band colors, but I think these Nike watch bands are kind of cool. But overall though, I do tend to prefer their sport loops best where they're just nice and light, they're breathable, and they work best for sports because they have a nice amount of stretch to them and you can get a nice customized fit. Oh, and that brings up one more thing is that if you order Series 9 with any new sport loop, it's actually Apple's first product that they're advertising that's net carbon neutral. So while the design of the Series 9 remains the same, one upgrade they made this year is with the display. So with this new display on the Series 9, it can now reach a peak brightness of 2000 nits, which is incredibly bright for a smartwatch display. Now, I never really had any complaints about the brightness on the Series 8 or even older Apple watches for that matter, but hey, we now get a brighter display. And where this will probably make the most difference is outdoors and direct sunlight, where it should be easier to see, especially like if you have sunglasses on. And then on the complete flip side, the new display on the Series 9 also has an overall lower brightness level where it can now get all the way down to one nit versus two nits on the Series 8. And this not only conserves a bit on battery life during nighttime hours, but maybe more importantly, it's easier on the eyes during those hours where seeing blue light can actually disrupt sleep cycles. But on the smartwatch side of things, the Series 9 is really gonna be just like any Apple Watch before where it's an incredible smartphone companion where it provides the best smartwatch experience with an iPhone where they're super tight and integrated where on the tech side of things, you have tons of functionality where you can view text, of course, but then you can also reply with an on-screen keyboard. You can reply with emojis as well as use voice dictation. And then on the call side of things, you can take calls on the watch itself since it has a built-in microphone and speaker. And if you opt for a cellular version of the Series 9, you can also do this without needing to have your phone with you. And then on the app side of things, you can get all those same notifications, but there's also plenty of extended functionality that you can get with third-party apps. So really with the Series 9, just like every other Apple Watch, it's an amazing smartwatch in that regard. The Series 9 also comes with their new S9 SIP or system in a package, but putting all that marketing stuff aside, it's basically all the processes processors and chips and stuff like that inside that's basically an upgrade where you're getting faster performance, but it also allows for some features that aren't available on previous Apple Watches, like their new double tap feature, as well as their on-device Siri and Siri Plus health features. So when it comes to their new double tap interface feature, this is designed to be a convenient way to perform certain actions on your Apple Watch with just a quick double tap of your thumb and your index finger. But I actually found this to work with any other combination of fingers. And for some examples of what you can do with this feature, so if you're on the watch face, if you double tap, it brings up your smart stack and then you can scroll through your smart stack with subsequent double taps. And then you can also perform other functions like answering and ending phone calls. You can start and stop timers, which I think is actually a great feature if you only have one hand free. And you can also pause and play music. 
And then here's just kind of a full list of things that you can do when the feature gets enabled. And then you can also customize the behavior where you can change the music functionality to either play or pause or to skip a track. And then with a smart stack, you can switch it from advancing through the smart stack to selecting a widget. Now, for a few specific details on this feature, first off, it's actually not going to be available when the Series 9 is first launched, so the double tap feature is slated to come a little bit later this year with a software update. And another thing is that it only works when you have the watch face enabled. So like if you have your hand to your side, it actually won't work. And I overall think this is a good thing just to prevent any accidental taps. So you'll basically have to turn your wrist to wake up the display to have the double tap feature work. And like I mentioned before, I found this works with any of your other digits, not just your index finger. Now, Apple Watches have had similar functionality before with their assistive touch feature. So that begs the question, how is this actually different? So the double tap feature is designed to be kind of like an add-on to the existing interface like the touchscreen, the digital crown, and the side button. So basically adding convenience with some areas within the interface. The assistive touch feature is more meant to be an alternative to those controls. So for individuals who may not be able to actually use the other hand to use those controls. And with the new double tap feature, they're specifically using the new neural engine in that S9 SIP to process these requests versus assistive touch, which utilizes the main CPU, which is a lot more power hungry. So with the new double tap feature, it's basically a feature that's meant to be an always on feature that doesn't drain the battery as much as assistive touch. But don't worry, you can also turn off double tap if you'd like as well. But the other difference I found comes down to consistency. So while the assistive touch feature does offer a broader set of controls than double tap, I found that assistive touch isn't all that consistent where maybe like 80% of the time it works, but there's many occasions where it doesn't. With double tap, it's incredibly consistent where it works pretty much all the time, unlike assistive touch, which I found to be kind of like airdrop. It works all the time, sometimes. But overall, I found this feature can be useful, especially if you're carrying something in your other hand. Is it a game changer? I think that's probably kind of a stretch, but it can make things more convenient in some situations. Oh, and really quick, if you're finding the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below. These sorts of videos do take a bit of time and effort to film, so just hitting that like button helps this video and the channel out quite a bit, and I appreciate it. Okay, so back to the new feature. So the new S9 SIP also enables new Siri features like new on-device okay, Siri, Siri requests, meaning that you can make Siri requests on the watch itself versus having to be connected to the cloud or your iPhone for those requests. And the aim here is to have faster responses and it's also supposed to be more secure, meaning that the requests and responses remain on the watch itself and you don't have to go through any connections. And for what it can do and can't do, so you can do stuff like starting a timer, starting a stopwatch, or launching an app. Set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. But unfortunately, I found that it doesn't do stuff like kind of simple math. What's four plus one? To do that, you'll need to be online. So I would like to see that functionality be expanded in the future. And speaking of the future, the new S9 SAP will also bring a new Siri plus health feature. So here's where you'll be able to ask Siri for health information that your watch collects, like what's my resting heart rate, how much sleep did I get last night, or how many steps have I taken so far during the day. But just like the double tap feature, the Siri plus health features are coming later this year via software update. And then another new feature with the Series 9 is a new precision find feature for your iPhone 15 or 15 Pro, where this allows you to find your iPhone just like you would find an AirTag. And this is made possible with a new ultra wideband 2 chipset that's found on the Series 9. But this does also require an iPhone 15 or newer since those also share the same second gen UWB chip. And then when it comes to battery life, the Series 9 has the same 18 hour all day battery life claim that's been the same on basically all of their previous Series line of Apple Watches. I do tend to find Apple battery life claims generally to be pretty conservative though, so I'm usually able to get about 24 hours out of mine. Oh, and the Series 9 also does have a fast charging feature in case you need to quickly charge your watch. And then when it comes to recording outdoor activities, they claim that the Series 9 can record up to a seven hour long outdoor activity in its normal power mode. And I found this to be conservative, like on this two hour ride, it used 23% and just doing the rough math, that means that it could potentially last over eight hours. Now this is probably the Apple Watch's main crutch though, and likely the number one complaint that all of us have about an Apple Watch. We just want longer battery life. Now, they're obviously sticking to the guns here with that battery life expectation, but what's interesting about this is that they also went with a brighter display, but they also went with a new processor. And new processors aren't just about being faster, they're also about being more efficient. So this is where I think they could have probably squeezed more battery life out of it, but they chose instead to make the processor do more things like those on-device serial requests, as well as the double tap feature. Now, one thing I would say though about having an 18 to 24 hour charging cycle is that 
it just kind of becomes a routine, like just something that's part of your day. And there can be something to be said about that. Like for me, I usually take off any watches that I'm wearing for a couple hours each morning. And it just allows me to disconnect for a bit and also gives my wrists a break. And that's just a great opportunity to throw it on the charger. But still, am I bummed that we're still at that all day battery life and not anymore? Of course. Okay, so now let's get into the sports and fitness side of things with the Series 9. So with the Series 9, just like previous Apple Watches, it can track tons of different kinds of sports with everything that you would expect, like running both indoors and outdoors, cycling both indoors and outdoors as well. There's plenty of gym profiles, and there's even pool swimming as well as open water swimming. And then the Series 9 also even comes with some of the more recent updates like being able to track triathlon. And when it comes to tracking outdoor activities, the Series 9 has a built-in satellite chipset, or a more common term, maybe GPS. But with this, you can go track your run, walk, or bike ride, where you can get pace, speed, as well as distance without needing to have your phone with you. And then at the end of your activity, it'll also provide a map of your route. And in terms of accuracy, the Series 9 does really well. I had zero issues with it with all the activities I've used it for over the last couple weeks. So like on these runs, the Series 9 did great. And then the same thing goes for these rides as well. Very good results compared to the other devices. And then for the finer detail, the GPS tracks, good stuff here as well, where there weren't any big misses or anything like that. On some tighter corners and curves, it may have a tendency of rounding these off a bit smoother than what you're actually doing in real life. Not necessarily anything earth shattering, but may not be the exact path that you're doing. Now, where this Series 9 differs from the Ultra 2 is that the Ultra 2 has a dual band satellite chipset where it can access two different satellite frequencies at one time. And with this kind of technology, it can offer better accuracy in environments where satellite signals can kind of get iffy, like around really tall buildings, like in a downtown area of a city, tall canyon walls, or a lot of heavy tree cover where satellite signals can actually bounce off of those objects. But even so, I wouldn't be overly concerned there in regards to accuracy with the Series 9. It performs really well. If you do tend to do a lot of activities in those sort of more challenging and environments, the Ultra 2 may be better, but for most activities, the Series 9 will work great. Oh, and then one more note about GPS is that with newer Apple Watches like the Series 8, the Series 9, the original Ultra, as well as the Ultra 2, these will always use the satellite chipset on the watch itself to track your activities. So with previous Apple Watches like the Series 7 and before, if you had your phone with you, what would happen is that the Apple Watch would actually piggyback off your phone and use the phone's GPS. But this doesn't happen with the newest Apple Watches. Oh, and then I also tested the Series 9 for how well it does at estimating distances while running indoors on a treadmill, and it was very close to this test. Apple Watches tend to do very well here with this, but for some reason, if your distance is off, there doesn't seem to be a way to actually adjust it after your run. And then the Series 9 will also get all the new sports and fitness features that came out with Watch OS 9 as well as Watch OS 10. So with running, it'll collect your running power, which is basically just another way of gauging your level of effort during a run, in addition to other metrics like pace and heart rate. And then the Series 9 will also get all the new Watch OS 10 features, like a lot of new features for all the cyclists, like the ability to pair to speed and cadence sensors, as well as power meters and smart bike trainers. And then the Series 9 also can display topo maps, which show contour lines when you're out in the wilderness, which just basically adds context in regards to the terrain. And I already have a whole bunch of other videos out there on these new sports features, and I'll go ahead and have those linked down in the description below, which you can dive in once you're done over here. So when it comes to heart rate accuracy, the Series 9 has the same heart rate sensor as the Series 8, as well as the Ultra and Ultra 2 for that matter. Now, one thing that may not be as well known with Apple Watches is that they have some of the most accurate sensors out there when it comes to smartwatches when it comes to heart rate. So to kind of run through some examples here, here's an indoor bike ride and you can't really tell a difference between the external heart rate straps I was wearing as well as the Series 9. There was basically no difference. There was this little moment right here at the beginning of the ride where the Ultra 2 actually wandered a little bit, but that's just something that can happen with Apple Watches I found is that it can take a few minutes to lock onto heart rate initially. And then taking it outside for some road biking, the Series 9 does a great job here as well. So with road biking, there's a few things that can throw off the accuracy of a heart rate sensor, such as vibrations from the handlebars, as well as bumps in the road that could make the watch bounce around on your wrist. So you may see a few spots here and there where it's not quite as accurate as the previous example, but overall, this is great. And then for running, the Series 9 did a pretty good job here as well. There were a few spots where it wandered a little bit, but it usually corrected itself pretty quickly. But what is kind of interesting about the end of this run here is that it actually didn't quite track that last increase in heart rate where I went over 170 beats per minute. Now, what this appears to be is what they call a cadence lock, where what's happening is that the heart rate sensor gets thrown off by the cadence of my footsteps and actually locks onto that, which for me, my cadence right there, right around that time, was 160 steps per minute. However, on this run here, I didn't see that happen. So that may have been a one-off, although I did see that kind of momentary bobble at the beginning of the run, but after that, it got back into shape. 
And then when it comes to weight training and high intensity interval training, the Series 9 did a great job here as well for this kind of an activity. Now, weight training is basically one of the hardest activities for a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor to track accurately, and that's due to gripping onto the dumbbells as well as a lot of varying arm movement, both of which can affect blood flow in the wrist. But Apple Watches tend to do a very good job with these kind of movements. There were these two spots here and here though where it missed these intervals at the end, but all in all, this is a very good result. Now, one thing I wanted to bring up though in regards to heart rate accuracy is how it compares to the Ultra 2. So what I found over the many years of me testing smartwatches is that larger and heavier watches don't tend to be as accurate as smaller and lighter ones, even if they share the exact same sensor like the Series 9 and the Ultra 2. So for example, here's kind of like a half road, half gravel ride that I did where I was wearing the Ultra 2 on one wrist and the Series 9 on the other. And this was a pretty rough gravel ride where there was a lot of rough terrain and the Ultra 2 didn't produce the same results as the Series 9. Okay, so with all that, now let's go ahead and talk about reasons that you may want the Series 9 or reasons that you may want the Ultra 2. And the first one may be kind of obvious, but it's price, where the Series 9 starts at $399 and the Ultra 2 is $799. So what exactly do you get for double the price? So the first thing is durability, where the Ultra 2 has a titanium case with some extra protection around the side buttons as well as the display. And the Ultra 2 has a sapphire lens versus the Ion X lens on the Series 9. The protection around the display is nice to have on the Ultra 2, as well as the sapphire lens for increased scratch resistance. And I think those do help with things like if you're doing a lot of hiking, mountain biking, and quite frankly, even silly things like brushing up against a concrete wall or something like that. The Ultra 2 also has a larger case than the largest 45 millimeter Series 9, which which may suit some people better, but also can be a reason not to get the Ultra 2 where it may be too big for some folks. But along with that larger case, the Ultra 2 also has a larger display with a couple watch faces that take advantage of that larger size. The display on the Series 9 though is still a great display, and if you're not comparing these side by side, I don't think it's necessarily something that you'll miss. The display on the Ultra 2 also can get brighter going all the way up to 3000 nits. Now again, going back to what I was mentioning earlier, 1000 nits is already very bright, yet alone the 2000 nits on the Series 9. So while the 3000 nits is brighter, I've simply never had a problem with the Series 9 or previous Apple Watches in that regard. The Ultra 2 also does have a night mode with certain watch faces where it turns its red color automatically using the ambient light sensor and the red color is supposed to be easier on the eyes during nighttime hours to help not disrupt sleep cycles. It is interesting though, having a red version of a watch face does seem like it could be easily added to the Series 9, so I'm not entirely sure why that's exclusive to the Ultra and the Ultra 2. And there are also some other features that are aimed at scuba divers, where the Ultra 2 is not only more water resistant down to 100 meters versus 50 meters, but there's also a dedicated oceanic app for scuba diving, so that's certainly a reason to get the Ultra if you're into those kinds of activities. There is also the action button on the Ultra where it can perform specific actions. Real talk though, after using the Ultra for over a year now, I don't necessarily use the action button all that often. In fact, I tend to accidentally press it a lot and a lot of times I actually turned it completely off. There are also some other things like how the Ultra has a dual speaker layout versus the single speaker on the Series 9 or how it has a three microphone array versus two. But arguably, maybe one of the most compelling reasons to get the Ultra 2 is longer battery life where it has an advertised battery life of 36 hours versus 18 hours on the Series 9. But just like the Series 9 though, I do find that 36 hour claim to be pretty conservative where I usually get around two days out of it even while recording outdoor activities. And then when it comes to recording outdoor activities, this is where if you're planning on going longer than the seven an hour long outdoor activity, the Ultra 2 will be the better bet. However, again, I find these estimates to be conservative where you may get even more. Oh, and then lastly, this is important too, is that there's also looks where the Ultra 2 may stand out a bit more than this Series 9. But now let's get into why you actually may not want the Ultra 2 and where the Series 9 may be the better watch for you. So first off, the Ultra 2 is heavier and larger, and that's gonna come down to just all day comfort and wearability, but also could affect heart rate accuracy with certain kinds of activities. The Series 9 is just a very wearable and comfortable watch where it's the kind of size and weight that makes it so I'm not really thinking about it. Plus, it's much easier to sleep with. When it comes to GPS accuracy, unless you're primarily doing those activities in those more challenging environments, the Series 9 will still serve you very well. And funny enough, I actually also put the action button as a reason why you may not want the Ultra 2. So for me, I just kind of accidentally press it far too often, so I don't necessarily find it to be a super compelling feature. But lastly, the Ultra 2 is twice the price, and while it does have those additional features that I talked about, at their core, the Series 9 and the Ultra 2 share tons of the same features. And in terms of use as a fitness watch, those features are largely the same, probably with 
the exception of the scuba features. So while there are certainly reasons to get the Ultra 2, the Series 9 should work for plenty of you out there, and you get to keep more money in your pocket, or you can spend that money on new running shoes or put that towards a new bike. There's never enough. So it would be kind of hard for me to recommend the Series 9 as an upgrade if you own a Series 8 or Series 7 or even Series 6, but if you own a Series 5 or older, that's where the Series 9 may be a good option. So what do you think? Are you going to go for the Series 9 or are you going to go for the Ultra 2? Let us all know down in the comments section down below, and if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more videos just like this that are coming soon. In the meantime, happy running, happy riding, or whatever else you like to do for fitness, and we will see you in the next video.